everyone, Gina with Belly Beads Jewelry here today, bringing you a tutorial on a product that I am so in all of. I just think it's totally amazing, and it's Patina by Vintage, and this product here is amazing. Now, it's been on the market for some time now, but I found that I don't see a lot of it being incorporated in pieces um, in jewelry that I actually make. Now, you know I make the paper beads, right? Here's a, an example of. Here's a bracelet that I've created. Actually, it was on July 4th. As you can see, it has red, white, and blue stars. Or I'm sorry, red and white stars on it. And I have the silver that I have um, combined with it. It's a bracelet, of course, right? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a lot today because I think it's rather important you understand. I wear my jewelry. When I create a product, I wear it. I want to see how it wears. I want to see how it tarnishes. And I want to see how it breaks. Now, of course, we have to be careful. When I when I sell my pieces, I even have like a little index card or a little business card just explaining the piece to it. So they're careful with it. I mean, it is coated. It is protected. But a lot of us would love to wear our jewelry 24-7. With paper jewelry, it, you can but you have to be a little careful, a little bit more careful. So anyway, I created this and I'm going to show you how I enhance this piece of jewelry. Now, my style is bohemian and that's a lot of silver in it. I'm trying to incorporate some gold in it, but it's difficult when you love silver. All right, so now here we go. We have all these colors of patina. I want to tell you a little bit more about this product, which is fabulous. The reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is because beginners are always searching for the right tool, the right paper, or the right um, paint, or the right paintbrush, and I want to bring it all together. A lot of my future tutorials are going to be based on products that I use. I know as a beginner, when I began looking at searching for tutorials and watching tutorials, I would actually look to the side of the focal point of what they're creating and look at their table and wondering what's the name of that tool? Why is that board over there? Or how are those um, wires, you know, how, what gauge is that? So I want to bring it all to you like a little guide so you don't have to search so much. It's like I'm doing the footwork for you because I know as a beginner, I... I watched hundreds and hundreds of tutorials of all different types of products, but you don't know when to use them or how to use them. So hopefully I can help with that. So today is going to be about patina. And it's not just like any other kind of paint. Now this paint is used specifically for metal, which of course I love even more. When you paint it onto your... And I'm going to show you how to do this, but here's some, here's one now. This is really popular. These this was just a silver piece, um, okay. And I'm going to incorporate my paper beads to it. There's two little hooks there. I'm going to create a pendant, but it was pretty as silver. But you know what? With working with paper, you want to incorporate color, correct? Right. So we want to find maybe a perhaps like an orange so i'm going to pull out some, okay here's some beads here's some paper beads i have here they're not they're not glazed they're they're getting ready for their bath but look at these colors right isn't that pretty towards the it, it actually accents it so when i'm choosing a piece of metal I can color it to the color of my paper, which I totally love. All right, so these are these were all clear metal. I mean, just take a look at these. These are absolutely wonderful. These were all silver. And look, look at the colors I created. And you can really take advantage of all these colors. Now, they come in all different colors too, so you have your choice. They are a little pricey, but I will tell you they go a long way and I'm going to show you how. All right, so let's take a look at how to use this product. The one good thing I want to explain to you, 
this product is used for metal. Now again, I'm not sure, I've never used it on anything else but metal. I haven't used it on paper and I'm sure you could probably use it, but I don't know. All I was concerned was with the metal because I was getting a little bored with just wearing, you know, the silver pieces. And also I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the silver pieces and what happens to them and how it's it, it really helps. There were change, color, chains I wanted to create with my beads. This was just a silver chain. Look at what I did to it. It's patina. Now there's certain types of colors that you can create and you can put as many layers of paint on this as you want. Like if you really didn't want to see the silver, I love that rugged look. It's like a free spirited type of um, patina. And I like that. I like rubbing off the, the paint and, and creating that look but you don't have to. You can just keep putting more layers of paint on them. And it doesn't take a lot of paint. But chain, can you imagine the price of chain alone and for colors, chains of, um, that have color in it, it's expensive, but you can create your own. Keys, these were just plain brass and you can use any kind. You can use copper, brass, and they give you all a different color. These are my keys and I love keys. I'm gonna make pendants out of them, but I've created this old kind of worn, tattered kind of patina look. I love the way they look. Here is a silver, this was a silver, I'm sorry, brass color leaf, right? I patinaed it. And then I did something special to that. And I'm going to show you how I did that as well. But look at that. I don't think I could have purchased that anywhere else. And accessories, findings, jewelry findings are so expensive, especially as a new beginner. You have got to keep within your budget. So this allows you to expand. Purchasing everything in just silver is fine, but you can create your own color. Now, this is really unique. There are two holes on the side of here, and I can create a nice little bracelet. And um, it can be an embroidery bracelet. I can put chains on it, but I can use the colors of the paint I use. Look at these bracelets. They were all silver. This is a green. This is like a, um, a forest green. And there's a lavender. But the things that I can use with this is amazing. I can even take these apart if I wanted to and just use the, um, the little bead itself and use them as earrings. I think this is really cool. And this was done with this color. And you know what's even more special? You can combine different colors and mix your own colors. Now, a lot of people have asked me, and again, this is all influenced by my followers. They have asked me tons of questions of what types of products I use. So I wanna give this and offer this to you. So it takes Kind of, kind of take. I, I, it kind of takes the, the, the searching and all the hard work of, of, of looking for things. I use a color wheel. I think it's really important to use a color wheel. And if you don't know how to use a color wheel, there is actually a lot of tutorials on that as well. And I have one if you want to go back to one of my tutorials. But if, if I want to use, let's say, an orange, and I will use the dial and click on the end, just choose that orange, and then it gives me an array of different colors, combinations, and if I want to use an opposite color to the orange, so look, here's my orange piece, and my other opposite color would be a teal. So look at the way they go together really well. So this helps me a lot. I always use my color wheel, but you know what else you can use? Going through magazines, going into a department store. They're the best color wheel that you can possibly find because they they do that for a living. They do the marketing in, in furniture stores are, 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 are fabulous. I love the way they um, combine their colors. So let's get back to my bracelet, right? Now, I don't use sterling silver. I'm a new beginner as well. I've been doing paper beading for about a little over a year. I've learned so much, made a ton of mistakes. And every time I've watched tutorials, it always seems so perfect and it looks great. But you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to try to, now this was my problem child kind of bracelet. So I love making mistakes, 
I, I know it's really kind of strange, but I love making mistakes on videos because it allows you to see that everything is just not so perfect, right? So if I turn this over, now this was, this was, I was experimenting with this type of leather cord. It's very thin, right? If I turn it around, I'm not liking that at all. I don't even know why I decided to do that. But if I pull that a little bit, that's going to come right off, right? Also, take a look at the silver pieces. Uh, they don't, I don't know if the camera could show it, but they don't look silver anymore. How many of you have bought tons and tons of jewelry findings, created your jewelry pieces, and let's say six months down the road, you're at a craft show and they look tarnished. What do you do? Well, there's tons of things that we've always learned, you know, nail polish or clear glaze and things like that. But you know what is really awesome? This stuff right here. This stuff is amazing. It also prevents tarnishing. So here are my lavender pieces. These are little jewelry findings. And I'm going to make um, some bracelets out of them. I kind of... Um, rubbed off the paint to make it look like it was tarnished, which I love to do. But with this patina, it also protects the metal from tarnishing. How much money can we save with that? Now, in addition to your patina paint, there's also the gloss. You have to use this on top of it. Do not mix it in. There are ingredients. I mean, the, the directions, I'm sorry. The directions state that you should mix them two together and apply it. But I don't personally do that. I usually paint it and then I use the gloss. This gloss can also be used on top of regular metal pieces so it doesn't tarnish. But this is like amazing because it saves so much money. Who wants to sell a piece that has tarnish on it, right? But now once you've used this gloss on top of it, you can't paint it anymore. So be mindful. Look at your pieces. If they look tarnished already, I would not suggest you using this first because it's just going to make it a shiny tarnish. I would paint it. I would paint it any kind of other color. Now, I have this as red. I mean, I can even use blue on this. I can use the pink on it, which I probably will. Or it might be red, white, and blue since they're they're blue. But now they're tarnished. They were never treated. I'm going to shake this out. And usually there's a, like a little ball in there and you're just going to shake it all up. Another tip. When your, um, when your paint, when your paint is a little older and you haven't used it often, just Turn them upside down. Now I have, here is my, now this is, excuse it, but it is quite a mess <laughs> because I've been using them. I had this little cart thing. I would turn them upside down. Even though I'm not using them and I won't be using them for a couple days, I'll just turn them all upside down and then the following day, and make sure though, of course, the cap is on right, but turn them upside down, rotate them because they have to constantly be um, shaken so they don't, um, separate so the ingredients doesn't separate now if you haven't used it and you think it's a little harder to come out here is some warm water okay and you just dip your um your can your bottle into the water and leave it there for a good maybe 15 minutes and it will certainly start to um, separate and get a little warmer the warmer any paint is the easier it is to pour out so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use the blue. Okay. Now again, I had mentioned you can go ahead. I'm just gonna move these aside here because I I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here is my little paint. Now a lot of times you'll get this on top of it. You want to make sure that you clean that off. This is very, very thin, very thin paint. And I will tell you, you don't need no more than that. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and dip 
You can use any kind of brush. I like to use um, a little bit harder bristle. Um, it kind of gets into the little crevices of the silver. So I'm going to go ahead now and look how pretty that blue is. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm not going to keep that so blue. I'm a kind of, uh, because my jewelry is like bohemian style, free spirited, nothing is ever perfect, which I love, <laughs> right? So I'm going to let that dry for a moment. Okay, I'm going to put that down for just a second. Put it over here. And you're going to need, this is one of the blocks, it's a neophile block it has now the company does vintage does have or vintage excuse me does have their own block let me show you i think i may have one more left um yeah i i think what happened was this is what happened to it so i think um yeah anyway i bought my own I got them on Amazon. I got like about 50 of them for $5. So don't go crazy on that too much. Here it is. It takes about a second to dry. I mean, look at it. It's already dried, right? You know, I can leave it like that and paint the entire other side. But I really love to brush it, make it look like it's worn. It's patina. Very lightly. You don't want to um, get in that camera there. You don't want to brush too hard. You want to keep the blue. Look at the blue, how it's in the little crevices. Isn't that the coolest thing? There you go. There's the one. Now, I really like that. I think it really does bring like a little character to it. It's giving it a little bit of a, of a story. See, the red, white, and blue. Now, I'm going to go do the other side of it. Again, See, I don't even need that much paint. And that's what's the great thing about it. Even though it may be a little pricey, you don't need a whole lot. So don't pour a whole lot. I'm going to let this sit for a little while. Now I'm going to bring my glaze in. And I'm just going to put a little bit, I'm going to put a little tiny bit um, in there. And while that is... Let's see. I think what I need to do is, excuse me one moment. I think I need to pierce. Okay. All right, here we go now. Let's see if it's going to come out. There we go. You have to pierce the tip of that with a pin. Now here is the glaze and here is the other side. It's still a little wet. I could still see it wet, right? I want to show you some other pieces while that's drying. Look what I did. This is obviously for Halloween, but look at the pieces that I have done for Halloween. I had purchased these. They were just silver, right? You could see the silver coming through it, but isn't that the cool? Let me take my ring off. I think that's kind of in the way. There we go. Look at that. I think it's awesome. I have lavender and orange, but this can coordinate with my paper. So anytime I am making some paper, uh, paper jewelry, paper beads, I can certainly, now here is one of, some, now these are not glazed yet. I'm, they're getting ready. But see my paper? Look, it can go with the orange. So I can coordinate everything. And then, okay. So here we have the paint, it has already dried, and I'm gonna get my filing board block, and I'm gonna, look how it's bringing it up. Isn't that the coolest thing? All right, and it's just getting into its little crevices. Now, if I wanted to, I can even go further and continue, just keep, let me see, I wanna show you. Now, of course, you wanna do this before you create your be your your jewelry pieces of course look at that i think i just like it like that that is so pretty all right so that's what um 
this is, is just so fantastic. And if you want to create some style, more color to bring it, it's just another type of medium that can enhance your piece of jewelry. So I'm going to now show you how, let me grab another um, paintbrush so I can show you how to use the glaze. So this is the glaze and I poured it in here, right there. And it's real easy and you don't have to wait for anything. You don't have to wait. This is already dried. And then just dip your brush into it. And then just go ahead and I would do one side of each because, you know, finish that off. And then do the other side when you're done. And I'm going to show you, here's a piece I did, and it is with the orange. Actually, this is called, I don't know because it's already, <laughs> I apologize, It's I think it's tangerine. It's um, It's been all, has paint all over it, sorry about that. Did this with orange, and then I glazed it. You can actually see that there's a shine to it. See? So that's something, another piece of information. I think it's just important that you try to find as many mediums as you can to work with. I, I know I become a little bored with um, with the same product or the same medium that I'm using. Now let me show you too, because you may have questions about, let me see if my, I think my lighting is a little off and I want you to see this. Here is a copper piece. This, these are jewelry findings, and I actually sell these in my Etsy store. Oh, and by the way, oh yes, I do. I sell these also in my Etsy store. These are this is copper, and this is a gold. I want to show you what it looks like and how it changes. So with this one, I can certainly use the blue. It's fine. I'm going to go ahead and use the blue. Now you may think, do I have to scuff it up first? No, you do not, because this. Um, product is specially uh, used for pieces that are metal that are not, um, does not have to be primed. You don't have to prime it. But look at that. Isn't that the prettiest thing? I love this stuff. There is endless things that you could do with this. And also you can um, use different colors. So now that was a copper color and we're going to show you what it looks like. And this is, I think I'm going to use another color on the gold. I think I'm going to use this color. It's called Jade. And I think that's what this is. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put some, oh, that's a lot. That's way too much pain in my, in my pan there. But let me see if the camera's picking that up. Look at that color. That's a pretty color. That's a pretty green color. Now I'm just showing you that this is on a piece of gold because you may think it's only just for silver, but it isn't. And I have to tell you really though, we, um, you know, beginners and we're always trying to, we're in a budget, you know, we try to keep within our budget. We try to make money off of the products or I'm sorry, off of the jewelry pieces. And a lot of times we don't come out with really not a very good profit because we spend so much time and energy on our product and our pieces. We can't use sterling silver because then that would jack the price up. So to keep your pieces remaining pretty and silver like, as soon as you um, have your pieces ready, like my, my, um, my schedule is as soon as I receive packages of my pieces of jewelry um, findings and their silver. I use a lot of like metal or alloy, whatever, because um, I'm trying to keep my prices down low too. I would probably start right then and there that day and spread them. And I'm going to show you. Here is, let's see if I could find, here we go. Here is one. I just received these. Okay. I put them on a tray. I put them all on a tray and I glaze them. Now, if I wanted to place color with them, I'll just put them in a bag into the side and put a note on it. But 
these are already glazed and they're not going to tarnish because that's the most embarrassing thing. You've worked so hard on a piece of jewelry and then all of a sudden it tarnishes. Okay. So, and the people that do purchase this, they know it's not sterling silver, but you still want to make it look nice too. Now you're going to ask me, what do you do with these silver, um, the, the, the balls, the little beads, the round beads here, they're tarnishing. Can you color them? Yes, you can. You can get them and lay them out on a tray and color them. I'm just kind of winging this. Don't ever do this with your pieces of jewelry already made, but I just want to show you what you can do. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And if you want to, you can go ahead and brush that off and just have a little silver coming through. Now let's go back to our other piece. Look at this. This is the blue. It's already done. Now, if I wanted to, this is another way of, I'm going to just take some of that off. It, it really does make a pretty, it makes it really, gives it a whole new look. Oops. All right, look at that. Now, you don't have to do this, but that's another way. Let's say I just wanted to use, I wanted to just, um, I'm going to put another color in it. Let's say I wanted to put another color in it. I'm going to get my very small brush. And I just wanted to, oops, let's just outline or color in those little leaves. I'm sure you can do this first if you like but then you wouldn't be able to get that blue in that little crevice so I usually do it after I usually put my main color down first and of course I'm kind of rushing here so I'm rushing this project a little fast so it's getting a little messy but look that, that that's the, the, some of the things that you can do or if you want you can just go ahead and I hope my hands steady enough to do this I don't think so. My hand's not steady enough. But you can certainly, it's just another way. It's just another way of um, bringing some life to your pro projects. Here's the green. Now we can leave it like this. I can certainly put um, some little dots. I'm going to use my green brush right now. I can certainly do this. There's little, there's like these little dots in there. I mean, I'm just showing you, you can do things like that. Then you can just go ahead and start to take that off. You, it, it, It's endless. The thing that you could do is endless. Okay. And there you go. And always do your back too. But just for video purposes, this is what I'm doing. And then don't forget, you must glaze. And there's your glaze. You can glaze right away. It doesn't have. It doesn't have to um, have to wait. I mean, once it's dry. And there's your other one. So these are other little pieces that you can use. I mean, again, how did it look? Didn't it bring a little bit more? life to this bracelet the silver is beautiful but now see I don't like it because it's tarnishing and I didn't know that I was able to use just this on my on my silver and I I should have done that before but I didn't so now um, I go back and I and I just make them all different colors which is kind of neat I mean it really is you, you figure these are handmade pieces anything can happen with handmade pieces of jewelry right and I think that is all I have to show you. Um, there are other pieces I can show you too. Now these are focal point pendants. And these are fabulous. I actually have these in my Etsy shop too. And I always do the back. I glaze them. And everything is water-based that I use too. Just so you know, by the way, water-based is very important that you know that because there's no um, toxic, any lacquer kind of thing that would irritate your skin. Now, of course, 
this may irritate some people's skin too, but there's no fumes afterwards. So I think that it doesn't bother me and I'm very allergic to everything. Um, but this gives a really nice, now I can certainly, I think I may even have some beads. Look at these beads. Isn't that the prettiest? These are, are yellow and I kind of have like, it's a chocolate brown with it. I can hang those by them or I can hang any kind of, of, um, of other kinds of beads with it. I'm trying to see what else I have here. These are all colorful beads. <laughs> These are not glazed yet, but once they're glazed, they're really going to make a difference. But again, you can coordinate everything. And these um, bottles, these patina bottles, these pro this product comes in tons and tons of colors. And I have all of them <laughs> because it allows me to be more creative with all my pieces. I have made earrings that were just plain silver i've actually had a customer that said can you bring this back to life for me her earrings they tarnished and they weren't purchased by me they were purchased long ago and uh she's and i and i did something to it i painted it these are other types of earrings that you can do these were just plain silver whoops and what else do i have here is the tree of life um, it's an earring, but I'm actually going to take this off and create a pendant. And I might, just might, place the different colors of the chakra colors. And um, I might put them on there too. So it's it's endless, as I mentioned. But again, I'm going to bring more and more tutorials that will allow you to um, create more if you want. It just gives you another medium, like I mentioned to bring your pieces a little bit more um a little bit more sp spaz or whatever you want to call it um a little bit more life to it <laughs> so here we go i am done for this tutorial and if you have any questions please comment below and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe you can also check, uh, click on the bell to remind you of all the up other upcoming videos that I am going to have. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this was a big help. And I'm going to do future, um, videos on this as well to help you and the, and the beginner, um, so you don't have to search so much. You know, we, we put our time into our jewelry pieces. I just want to combine it all for you. So, you know, I will talk about tools and what the names of the, uh, what the names of the tools are and wires and just trying to cut it all in a guide for you. You know, when I was a beginner, I always wondered, like I had mentioned, I wish there was just this guide that said, okay, all these tools do this for, for you. All these paints you can use or all these findings, you can use this with it, right? So uh, if, again, if you have any questions, um, please, you're welcome. I invite you to um, also join my paper bead uh, group. It's called Paper Beads Born Pretty on Facebook. We have a lot of things going on there. I also do a live um, a few times and um, interact with everyone and it's just been great. So I, I help, I hope this has helped you and have a great day.